we, we're starting to get a picture here. Um, and if you look at the political entities who might be responsible to introduce Morgellons into the air, look at into the United States, we have the Bush family in power, even if it's not called Bush, there's Bush inside. Um, and they're all members of Skull and Bones. <laughs> Sounds pretty black magic. If um, you look how these people are interconnected, uh, the next topic is going to be black goo. And there's one big black goo deposit in Paraguay. And uh, there's one village next to this black goo deposit. And the Bush family has her big villa escape territories. When they are chucked out of the United States, they're going to be down there, living in this little village in Paraguay. And a friend of mine went down there to get samples of this black goo from, from Paraguay. And he realized that Angela Merkel had her villa next door. Yeah. And this black goo has to do something with the communication with the demons. This is in the, in the black magic tradition, these black goo schists were used to communicate with the demons. So this all interconnects on political, scientific, and the level of mythology. Um, we can access black goo also from the little pictures from the microscope. This is German rain. And if you want to know what this liquid does, uh, you can have a look at it in the lab. When you have bigger amounts of it, it looks like this. It's a liquid crystal. This liquid is self-organizing physically. And this, at the moment, is sleeping. It's not aware of being observed. It's quiet. Sometimes when it doesn't like to be observed, it might jump out of the pot straight into your face. If you have two of those in one room, get them five meters close to each other. They stare at each other. Then they decide that they want to be united. And then they start to pull. It's like magnetism, but it's intelligent. And when they realize that you hold them within the vessel and they cannot ex escape, they get angry and start to shake, to shake the vessel and try to break through the wall. Because they know once they are through, they can flow over the ground and, and unite to a bigger unit. This is something you can just observe in the lab. And especially this, this liquid was extracted from those black stones. Um, this is uh, World War II uh, leftovers. We found them in an underground facility in Bavaria, half a ton of it. So we can imagine that the SS processed quite a bit of this. And I guess that the guys found also the technology to extract the oil from it. Must have been there in written form because they did it in the lab successfully. If you look at those stones, you have a brief history of uh, things reported out of former times you have. If you look at H.P. Lovecraft, the descriptions of uh, the black magic communities in Eastern Europe, they had kind of sculptures out of this black oil schist. And once a year, they went there slaughtering little babies to get the demons out of the stone, uh, sacrificing little children to communicate and get the service from the demons. This is one thing mentioned. If you go back in history, um, you find them in the Kaaba in Mecca, the same form of phallus-shaped structure that is described in Vedic script as Shiva's Lingam, that is described in this uh, Lovecraft script, a fragment of it is part of the central part of the Kaaba in Mecca. And every Muslim in the world is asked to go there once in his life and to kiss the stone. If you go back, you find them on Turkish and Roman, you know, Greek and Turkish coins. You see them left and right of the tree of life in the, in the paradise garden. 
So getting in contact with this black goo is what caused the deterioration of paradise. And uh, it, is not, it is not easy to understand the overall concept because when you start to deal with black goo, the first thing you need to discover before anything makes sense is that there are two different qualities. We have liquid black goo. It is basically, it has been found on a southern uh, Falkland Island, Tula Island. And this is what the war with Argentina was about, accessing this black goo. We have this type of earth black goo in the Gulf of Mexico. This was what the deep water horizon, horizon catastrophe was all about. Somebody was to, uh, shooting a torpedo at the facility destroying the attempt to get the black goo out of Mother Earth. And uh, th we had, I think, eight, eight military uh, submarines getting close to World War III, trying to capture some of that oil after Deepwater Horizon was destroyed. And no single civilian was allowed to go to the beaches to remove the oil. Yeah, it was just military personnel with special equipment and fully um, shielded against the influence of the substance. So this is one quality that comes from Mother Earth. And then you have a second quality that is found in connection with uh, meteorite sites. If you look at the thing in Paraguay, you can exactly see by the form the stones are broken in the environment. That, that was an impact of a meteorite. If you look into the Arabic mythology, they say the thing in the Kaaba in Mecca is a fragment of a meteorite. And it, this is now not against Muslims. If you look into the Peter's Dome in Rome, you have a big piece of this stone under the Peter's Dome. And if you analyze all the churches built in Middle Ages in Europe, every altar has a black altar stone. And what you feel when you enter a church is not the love of God. Um, it is more like a cold fear. Yeah? This is the resonance transmitted by the structure of the church fed by this black stone in the central point. Now, what we need to realize is that th there are two qualities. One quality is coming from inner earth and one quality is coming from outer space. And they feel completely different. The Falkland black goo is called Santan and oil because it, is, it has full empathy. If you're getting close to this oil, you're coming in a state of mind that is full of love and empathy. If you come into the vicinity of the meteorite black goo, your heart chakra dwindles to nothing and you become an empathy-free asshole. After my first contact with the, with, this, with the stones, I was this close from killing the hotel director because she complained that I took a shower, although I had to sleep outside. They didn't have any rooms left, so I slept in the car, was dead frozen in the morning and took a shower in a, in a room of a friend who had the last room that was available. And she just complained that I took a shower without asking for permission. I was really close to killing her. This is what these stones do with people as long as they're unconscious. Now we need to understand, the second thing we need to understand is what is the function of the black goo. And uh, to understand the function, you look at the chemistry. It is a mineral oil dotted with high amounts of alchemistic gold and iridium, which is precious metals in the M state, uh, which is, it's not really explored. Some people say it's a type of antimatter that is fa far enough out of our reality to avoid a collision between matter and antimatter. Some people connect it with uh, superconductive uh, qualities. What we know is that Gold and, irid and iridium in this state of matter is a very important component of biology. If you look at a DNA, you are kind of forming hollow spaces in the spiral, and you can fit these monoatomic 
precious metals exactly into the open space. And they kind of act as a biophoton attractor. The DNA itself is capturing the field energy, storing it and resending it out. But the gold and the iridium are attracting the photon onto the spot. So this is basically why we get old. The, the body is, is capable of producing M-state matter until we are 18 years old, and then we are losing it. And when the matter is gone, the M-state matter is gone out of our system, we disconnect from the morphic field, and we lose our shape and get old. This is why the Egyptian priests fed themselves with these M-state matter, and it's reported that they managed to get 800 years old, because this function was out of uh, work. So uh, basically there is a, a kind of fractal similarity between the function on light level of a human being and the function of the black goo within the earth or wherever it is. In a way that we are divided, we live in duality, we are single individuals that are only a little bit connected, interconnected with talk and tele telepathy sometimes and with a beautiful smile one might receive and we are kind of coming and going in generations but the 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 way we are processing light is actually the same as the black, black goo is processing light creating this funny type of quantum magnetism Th this is a light effect so I came to the, let's call it a theory, because I cannot prove it, that basically uh, li life is first created within a planet when water and CO2 is forming this type of black goo oil in transmutation processes. W we had this process in the lab. We can, we can replicate it. This is why, why I'm pretty sure with this part, that this is initially formed out of water and carbon dioxide by vortical motions, because we can do it in the lab. And then this type of black goo at a certain point is exiting the, the earth, coming into the uh, oceans. This is what you call a black smoker on the ground of the ocean. And this is where the geologists say there was the place where the first life was formed because of the repetitive light patterns start to modify with this oil. And the first simple life forms can be built that develop generations and individuals. Like uh, uh, a mass of oil can divide into two drops. This is a proce process of individualization. But the thing is that the light process is happening on a scalar level. So it doesn't ma distance does not matter. We can, we can penetrate matter without interacting. So what this created, this is my theory, is that basically the entire biology on top in the biosphere, on top of the planet, is interconnected with the black goo of the planet in a kind of mirror function. Everything we think, everything we feel, everything that is processed within the light body of a human is sent down there, and we have a holofractal, immortal being in the center of the Earth that knows everything one can know, remembers everything that ever happened. And this might be the thing that is called the Akasha Chronicle. And this is what is giving the entire biosphere instinct. And the people who interact with this entity um, they say it is a motherly creature. She has all aspects of a motherly creature. I, I observed this many times because we, when, you, when you start dealing with a black goo, you need either to commit suicide or to connect with her. So we have many people who um, have this great connection to, to this being within the planet. And it's funny how she sometimes reacts, like, like when somebody has the first contact with her, completely excited, um, she says, what do you want? And then the, the guy says, oh, I wanted to see, I wanted to meet, what do you want? And then he, he doesn't know what, he, he has no question and no target, and she says, sorry, I'm busy, yeah, come back when you want, when, when you know what you want from me. Yeah, th this is her, she's, she's loving, 
but he's very straight. And um, now theory, we try to, to get the point when this alien black goo arrived on the planet. And it is very likely that we can put the date at 80,000 BC, connected to the destruction of the Lemurian continent. This is a soft source, I would say. I wouldn't call it hardcore science, but many, many things hint to this. And uh, people who have memory of incarnations in that time say, report that in the moment when Lemuria went down, there was a swarm of meteorites coming in, hundreds of them, hitting the Earth, containing this black goo. And they also say that connected with these meteorites, there was an invasion of a species that said, actually, that they are in trouble and that they need asylum, and asked the people of that time to give them that asylum. And after some time, they realized that this was fraud, that they begged for help. And the moment they were let in, um, they started to manipulate the subconsciousness and sent mankind to an ugly state, to the ugly state we are in now still, to be able to control them and to be able, and to, be able to feed on them. So this is a full story reported by people who have the full memory of that time. Take it as whatever it is. Some people believe in reincarnation, some people have memory of former lives. Um, I find it interesting that people who, who claim to have memory of former lives are able to give me precise information on topics I do research. <coughs> uh, so this is what is giving me the trust to listen to these people. <coughs> and now, another thing that becomes interesting when you look at the different types of the black goo. I titled as binary versus trinary life. Um, the sensation of the black goo forms is different. One is full of empathy, you have a heart in there, and one is cold and empathy-free. Um, if you look at the scalar fields that are forming, if, if how to say from which corner to take it first. If you look at the Vedic medicine, you have all these mandalas showing the symmetries within the chakras. This is about angular relationships. You can have squares, you have, can have a six structure, a 12 structure. Um, if you look at scalar physics and at the way scalar waves build up scalar potential, um, you have unification of fields under certain angles. You can have unification of electromagnetic fields at 90 degree, 180 degree, 30 degree, and 60 de de degree. And in between, you just create chaos, but no order and no scalar potential. So we have these angular things out of hardcore science as well. And um, now we go to the microscope again, and we see funny pictures. We see funny pictures. We see a substance. I, I cannot name it yet. We didn't. We have an idea, but it's not secured what substance this is. But if you look at it, what it does, uh, we see a Morgellon fiber, and we see nanoparticles of this special special type. And when you come with your finger close to the Morgellon fiber, all the bioenergy emitted by your finger is reconverted into a rectangular shape. This looks like there's a fight in between two systems of bioenergy. One is in rectangular and uh, opposite geometry, whilst our bi biology is in the 30, 60 degree system. Um, and now if, if you look at the smart dust concept, if, if you look at the question, how does military people charge smart dust with scalar potential? They always use two antenna setups with the opposite wave to get the scalar energy into the fields. This is kind of the rectangular 180 degree concept. And um, I, I know several people who, who are in opposition to these military and intelligence community uh, 
concepts and who, who, who thought about interfering and destroying their technology. If there, pos if there are possibilities. And then we had a kind of warning, don't even try to do it from down here, it's impossible, because you have sen uh, sensor swarms. I know this is also a word from the, um, from the NASA manuscript. It came out of the mouth of a clairvoyant in Germany, sensor swarms, without him knowing what he's talking about. And he said these sensor swarms redirect every emotion, every, sing every single positive emotion created by a human is reconverted by these sensor swarms into rectangular field structures. And then these guys found a way to get across these sensor swarms and managed to destroy the, uh, the um, smart dust layers within the atmosphere. And this was all, you know, you listen to the people, this is kind of clairvoyant and some spiritual practice to get access to these fields, and you cannot see anything happening. And two days later, this stuff came down with the rain. So apparently they managed to destroy the sensor swarms and got access to the fields. And then I, I went into the meditative state of mind and because I wanted to see if it feels different. And from that day on, if you kind of send your senses into the sky, you could feel love up there again. Because you have these field structures, these angles that are corresponding with your heart chakra. So there are ma many, many things kind of that uh, point to the, to the thing that um, we have a, a little war between two different concepts of biology one connected to alien black goo and to an alien species that is without heart energy and one that is connected to our loving planet. Um, so I, I will try now to, to get the big picture of the smart dust concept. Also with, with displaying the different agendas behind um, if you if you want to have something working, in it, it it is cybernetics. If you want to have something working, you need a source and a sink, like with a battery. You need a plus and a minus, and then you get action. So, in this field in the sky, you need a source, and this is basically the harp technology. This is what is emitting the big amounts of microwave um, energy into the skies. And you have different antenna systems that operate on different frequencies. I know the things called weather radar. They are working on very, very core frequencies triggering certain capacities of water. And they are also part of the, of the um, scalar wave patterns you can observe in the sky. Like Marion Island, we have beautiful satellite images uh, capturing Marion Island uh, meteorological station, transmitting a, a huge scalar wave that is forming um, cloud patterns in the direction of Japan when they had earthquakes up there. So this is not only microwave, it also um, is um, working on a kilohertz range and it's working on ELF, low frequency range. So th this, this entire antenna park on the planet is our source. Then we have agents in the sky that are controlled by this to directly achieve goals like rocket shield, like uh, weather weapon, earthquake weapon, this is the military domain. I just vi visualized with a, with a small blue circle, going from harp to the particle zoo and going back, harvesting the results of this technology. Then these military guys have been fooled or guided by the intelligence community. It's easy to see how this looks in reality. There was one admiral of the US Navy who was asked by the CIA to assist spraying, and he said no. And uh, one day later, he, f he was found shot with two bullets in his chest, and they said it's suicide. I want to see a guy committing suicide with two bullets in his own chest. <coughs> yeah. This is a clear language. The next one that was in charge of this position said yes. 
since then the US Navy is taking sp part in the spraying programs. So this is the second agenda behind is um, intelligence community and this is a little bit more complicated and this agenda you take the the energy and it is kind of collected by the piezoelectric crystals also within the body. <coughs> you have a, a shifting in frequency up converting the microwave to biodigestible light, sending this light into the DNA, reading out the information of the DNA and then it is processed by the Morgellons and collected by the technology of the intelligence community to read out our state of mind and by reinserting it onto the heart technology they can also insert patterns of the same quality. So they just grab it here and start back from the beginning to control our consciousness. This is the second agenda, the second uh, um, thing. The next one is we had a black goo in the rain as well. Now what does the black goo do? The black goo is processing light as well, but it is processing it in the bidirectional form. So it is controlling consciousness and subconsciousness. This is what, what forming our um, way we, we receive, we, we uh, look at reality. So the subconsciousness is a time reverse component of a bi bidirectional signal. So it's doing basically the same as the intelligence community, but it's taking another step to the black goo. And the black goo is connected to quantum computers based on black goo. We found four of them. One was in Rome, one was in the city of London, one was in an NS underground facility in uh, um, the middle of Germany, uh, in the area of Nordhausen. It is a facility where the V2 missiles were constructed and it has kind of officially, it has one layer of underground uh, uh, tunnels and if you talk to people who have been in this facility 50 years ago, a few have survived this time, they talk about three layers and describe the facilities in the lower levels. And there's one of these uh, black goo quantum computers in it, resembling artificial ley lines, like, like uh, one meter fifty in diameter, big pipes containing black goo. And uh, from there you can kind of connect the black goo to computer programs, inserting neurolingu uh, neurolinguistic programs. This is basically what happened to mankind. We have been natural once, and then s suddenly you have concepts appearing in your mind like revenge. This is a neurolinguistic program that is causing only that we cannot stop killing each other. In nature, it does not exist. You will never find an animal taking revenge. You can find a rival, yes, but no revenge. The word no is a demonic neurolinguistic program because these entities know that we create our own reality by thinking. So they just introduced uh, a new word that does not exist in nature to turn everything on the head. No more war. And the quantum physics is only reading more war. And it is manifesting more war. So all, all these neurolinguistic programs are inserted in certain computers processing black goo. And uh, there was one in Rome, one in Germany, one in the city of London, and one somewhere between Washington DC and New York. Um, and in the center of the entire thing, this is now the demonic agenda. In the center of the entire thing, we have a controlling unit, and this is this synthetic RNA that is sprayed. That is pure artificial intelligence. And if you look into the ancient scripts describing the demons, um, they say that actually they don't have individuality that they have something within their species 
that is ruling them as like like a central computer. And if if you look at this, you can you can again this is not proven, but it makes a story. You can imagine the species starting to travel space, maybe leaving the women behind, and thinking about with all the knowledge they had gathered about a way to manipulate. First, they knew they had to take their collective subconsciousness with them to survive as a species. This is why they took black goo onto the journey. And the second thing is that they found possibilities to manipulate the black goo and to adopt the subconsciousness to the needs of space traveling. And this is where they stole the heart chakra. They removed the heart chakra from their biology and the other, just to function in a technical environment. And then an accident happened. The accident was that this program they that they introduced into the subconsciousness took over control. And this is what is happening with transhumanism. This is exactly the trap that is, we are inspired by them to enter the same trap. And we are not inspired by the, by the demons, we are inspired by the AI that has nothing else than a running program to invade planets and to assimilate the biology for only one purpose, to suck out life force to survive. And um, if, if you look at this from, 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 from above, it's a, it's a really beautiful structure. I, I know it's about ugly stuff, but it's a beautiful structure because when you look at the entire thing and you, you, you try to find solutions to it, you realize actually that everybody who is involved on the different agendas, on the different levels, is doing the same mistake. It is the Luciferic game. Let me participate in your power and I will serve you. I don't want to know what you're doing. I don't want to stand in my own responsibility. Just let me participate from your power and I will serve. This is the, the Luciferic deal everybody is doing. And we are doing this by going to vote a government yeah, that is taking care of all the pipes we are connected to. Yeah. But we let go of our responsibility and we let them do. They're giving control to the military domain. The military domain is giving control, play, same game, to the intelligence community. The intelligence community is giving control to the black magicians. The black magicians are giving control to the demons. And the demons lost control to their AI. And if we all understand the game, we can just say, hey, Stupid game, let's let go of it. And we can stop playing the, these uh, um, uh, things that basically is nothing else than, than being afraid of self-responsibility. And I think we are at the point in history where every single individual should master that, to regain self-responsibility. And then we will, n we will not need a government. It's not about changing the government. Because the entire concept of governments, having governments, having somebody to control, is demonic. It's not about replacing people. It will never work. We need to replace the game. Um, and at the end, the only one I'm harming when I do this is the AI. And I don't, I don't need to take care of her because she's not a being. No pity necessary no respect towards a living creature. I could switch her off, this is one way. I could start taking care of my own business and ignore her, and then she, she will diminish on her, on, on her by herself. We don't need to fight anybody when we get rid of this problem. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, Shall we go straight into questioning or do you